Hello and welcome to this time lapse. I am now going to paint a yellow rose. I start out with a, um, with a canvas that I have used um, uh, gesso on. As you can see, there are some textures in the, the canvas already, almost like a brick wall in a way, or a plastic wall. So I used the gesso to create some textures in, in, and cover the, the um, uh, canvas structure because I kind of think it becomes quite disturbing for the depth and stuff. And as you can see, I start painting on a toned canvas. I use raw umber over the gesso with just a wash with a turp or turpentine. No oil, because I like to keep it very dry in the beginning. I also start, as you can see, with just pointing in the, the light areas and then I start to add more detail or shadow as I go along. I also use the, the toned canvas as a basically a startup shadow just so when I put in the first uh, uh, points of light I have uh, the shadow already painted in in a way so and then I go as you can see in here now and I strengthen all the things around it, the darkness. But then first I used uh, the tone canvas as a guiding rod, you can say, for because it enhances the, the light areas or the bright colors I put in at the first, first uh, brush works. As I go along now, I just start adding in more and more of the flower. Or this is actually a wild rose. I love the wild roses for many reasons. They are not that rigid. They are very natural. And uh, they actually smell extremely good. This, and uh, I picked this rose in the park and I just brought it home. And I basically had to paint the whole thing in one go. Uh, but I did some adjustments after a while because, you know, getting all the details in at once was quite difficult. So, uh, as you can see in the main video, there is a, is a full uh, painting tutorial on my YouTube channel of this rose. And it's also, uh, there's also, uh, part, it also partitioned into different chapters. And uh, you can see me paint there. Usually I use music. In this one, I use music in the original file, uh, and it's basically what I call a painting flow. But I also talk about painting in the beginning and stuff like that. So check it out. You find a link in the description and uh, after this video. Now you can see closer. You know, brushwork is basically the thing that drives me. Uh, I just love this kind of building. Uh, more and more textures and colors. I also use old Holland paint because it has some thickness to it. So when you do layer upon layer upon layer, you can actually add more and more colors uh, without actually things turning into a mush. Uh, when I mean a mush, it's when you go too far, you mix too many colors, and in the end, it just becomes a mess. I call it a mush. It's almost like a we have a, this dish in Norway called lapskos and you just throw all kinds of vegetables into a bowl and you basically boil it until it's so soft that you can mash it up into <laughs> to some kind of almost liquid form. And that is lapskos. What's, and you don't want a painting to become like that. As you can see, I just add in more, and um, it was quite difficult actually because I, I, the yellow is so yellow that it almost becomes too much yellow, and uh, what shall we say? It is difficult to handle. Uh, but you just have to basically keep on working with it. As you can see here, I, I uh, 
start to give it a little bit more details in and add more details into the into the leaves and I also try if you see it on the side there where I, I painted this this yeah now we can see it. I try to repeat the colors also a little bit in the background there you can actually see and also in the flower you can actually see or the rosa you can actually see me adding some of the same colors both in the background in the foreground there on the neat and then I made this stripe on the on the because that is actually uh, a part of my um, a part of my uh, uh, stuff Lee which I just painted in just to have kind of a contrast to the rose because if I didn't have this thing on the side there it would be kind of flat and uh, now, yeah now we can actually see the rose also when I'm painting so we're standing in this small coca-cola bottle and uh, I had well I think it a lot that rose lasted basically for two days and then it started to kind of die so I had to get in I basically painted this in three days uh, then I added some some uh, details after that but uh, in the leaves and stuff but I uh, as as I was working with it it just basically started to die and the head start to hang and or the rose start to hang like like a, like a broken neck you know and, and uh, I had to hurry up so it was quite exciting doing it because of that I would highly recommend painting things like this because it's so great it's so you you train your mind in such a way when you do that if you only paint from photographs you really won't be able to evolve your eyesight that good because you have to understand that our, our brains actually try to interpret a photograph as a 3d object but but for eyes, it's much easier to paint um, a photograph because it's 2D and it's easier to probably absorb for the brain. Uh, so I would recommend putting up stuff like this and just try to go as far as possible. I paint a lot of, of um, different... Um, paint a lot of different um, still lifes uh, onions and craniums and stones and every things I find coons and everything things I find I do that because of the training of actually evolving my mind and uh, or my brain to see shape and it's been a very good help to me doing that uh, and now you can see I'm really starting to get into some more detail here. And the good thing in the the main video, you can actually see me paint um, this whole thing. I think it's a little bit over two hour long video, so you have some. And it's beautiful music in it. It is. Uh, I also have one file where I actually go through the whole thing. Uh, with an audio, um, with audio comment in in different segments, so uh, there's actually several of these videos on YouTube of this rose, and I hope that hope that you actually get something out of this. Um, and if you want to ask questions and stuff, you can do that in the description, or you can go to Patreon and become a patron, and you can talk to me about painting there and I will of course help you if you are a painter or a patron I will help you to evolve your painting skills now this is one of the, my favorite segments because it's so close up and in the original video there's beautiful piano music to this, uh, this thing so it almost like the piano music are connecting with the brushwork I do it is kind of a slow file you know, hair is fast, but when you see me actually do this brushwork in, in reality, in real time, it's just, I'm 
totally different so check that out too so yeah here you can see I just add more and more and here you can see what I meant with the yellow the yellow is so difficult and I, I need to build these things uh, a little bit green here yellowish towards the red then yellowish towards the green and I just and here I add some reddish in to get it you know when when light is shining through the yellow or the green you get the complementary color red on the other side and uh, that is the whole thing you have to think like nature well okay nature doesn't think but at least I don't think nature thinks but you have to think like uh, like everything is rainbow in a way so yeah and you can see coming closer some of the video file this is an old video file is probably back to my old studio so it's at least I think it was in the beginning of 2013 14 and uh, so it's quite an old video so some of the of the footage is actually burned out as they say it's too white but there's not much I can do with that so you just have to endure and learn I do love painting flowers and um, actually I just love painting I can paint anything any object that I find uh, natural and beautiful it's the same with with models they have to be interesting or beautiful or or they can pay me a hell of a lot of money <laughs> That's also a solution, but I prefer to choose my own models and uh, and um, do my own thing. Yeah. Now, it's not supposed to be a photorealistic thing, so it kind of looks like that for people. But if, if you check out real photorealism, it doesn't it doesn't come up to that level. And uh, that is also not where I go because I'm way too much of an impressionist, expressionist, and uh, my personality traits are more in the kind of always on, always there is no peace in my head. So, so uh, for me to become a very clear photorealist, I think it's not a project I would go into uh, I'm more like a Rembrandt type of painter now if you want to support my channel please go to patreon and sign up for a dollar five and I hope to see you there or in the next video hope you enjoy give a thumbs up leave a comment and share it in on social media yes